Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Dash. So, before I finish up for tonight, I wanted to go ahead and do this quick little video of my five most frequent questions that I'm asked. I did a video like this in the past, um, but it's actually a little bit more than five questions, probably like seven questions. But this will be a short to the point video, me answering these basic questions for you guys. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get into that. So, um, if you're interested and you wanna know my five most frequent sugar baby questions that could also be a help to you, keep watching this video. Okay, y'all, so before we get into our video, we, of course, have to talk about our perfume of the week, Dossier, of course. Shout out to Dossier. Um, of course, I have you guys a fabulous coupon code in my link in my description box. Um, this week is Fruity Jasmine. It is the dupe for Dior, Ja, ja Dior, All Day Perfume, whatever. Um, but it is the Dior scent. It is super fruity. I really like this, so I'm going to spray it on me now. Why not? You know? Acting like I'm not finna shower go to bed. <laughs> but whatever. Um, it smells super good, super fruity, super daytime. Definitely not date night vibes. I don't have the um ooh. It is strong and linger. It just kind of slapped me. It kind of just aided it a little bit. But mm, maybe definitely a daytime date. I still wouldn't wear it at night, but it's very sensual, very feminine. Mmm. I like it. I like it, but I definitely wouldn't wear it every day. Good for daytime, though. But yeah, y'all, make sure y'all use that link in my description box. Of course, my top sugaring sites are in the link in my description box as well. Sugar Daddy Me and Secret Benefits. Ezzy, stop it. Stop it. You always want camera time. Please stop it. Please. Just relax. This is the last video. Please. Okay. Ezzy always wants camera time, y'all. Ezzy. Ezzy. Seriously. Ezzy. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so the top sugar insights I recommend, Secret Benefits and Sugar Daddy Meat. The links are directly in my description box. Girls are having lots of success right now. Y'all know I always try to keep you updated on what apps and sites are best to get on right now. And right now, those are the two I recommend. So use those links in my description. They will take you directly to the sites. Um... And it's also other ones mentioned in my most recent apps and sites video, but those two are the two I recommend. And of course, I wanted to mention coaching. Um, I will be taking new clients for coaching um, 21 days before the new month, which is in a few days, if not tomorrow. Um, so you guys be on the lookout. That link will be in my description box as well. So let's jump into the video. Okay, so um, I'm going to answer my five most frequent sugar baby questions that I have written in my journal, but I also wanted to go off of a few off the top of my head um, that it just is a question that a lot of you guys need to ask because so many people don't know what is a sugar baby, okay? So people are confusing sugar baby with escort and prostitute, okay? What a lot of people need to understand is you do not have to have sex to be a sugar baby. You do not have to have sex to be a sugar baby. Now, the way I feel that this image has been portrayed is because sex workers have classified themselves, some have classified themselves as sugar babies. Um, and a lot of sex workers are on sites that were originally for sugar baby, sugar daddies. Like when I first became a sugar baby back in 2015, like it was a clear direct line between what a sugar baby and an escort was like you would truly get paid like me and the girls i was on the volleyball team with would truly get paid to go to events and dates and be literally arm candy like get big money and this is back when we wasn't concerned about like paying rent and shit like that with our money we was splurging like going to st john's town center and going crazy you know what i'm saying like shopping like i'm telling y'all um designer stores a lot of stuff got cut out of bling light but i like told all this story and every um all these different stories and stuff from when i was in college on bling life but like we would go and cash out in these like designer stores and designer stores would call us at 18 like telling us to come check out their showroom before they put out new products different things like that it was a very very glamorous lifestyle and like the sugar baby world has become such a dark fucking place 
that it's like taking a lot for me and the other girls who um, may be coaching in the sugar baby realm. Like it's so off, off, like it's offensive to sex workers when we say sugar babies don't have to have sex, but it's the fucking truth, you know? And like people need to really define the line between a, a prostitute, an escort and a sugar baby. There are three different things, you know? And it's just overwhelming sometimes that so many people feel like to have a sugar daddy, you have to have sex. No, that's not that. Okay, sex is so available and sex is cheap now, sadly. Okay, you got girls on Seeking, which used to be the number one sugar baby site that'll be selling cootie for $200, $300. Like, baby, back in 2015, my meat fee was $400 minimum. Like, to go to dinner with you, to get to know you, so you could potentially be my sugar daddy, you were paying $400. But it's so messed up now that, like, I don't even think that meat fee should be brought up in the conversation because it can be misconstrued, you know? So many things are changing, but it's because of the audience that is appealing to Sugar Baby World now. So, I just want to remind you guys that as a Sugar Baby, you do not have to have sex. You are not obligated to have sex. You are a prize, period. You should treat your, your pearl as a gem. Like, don't ever feel like you have to give that up to get the things that you want because that's not how it works in sugar baby world spoiled girlfriend world anything and like literally you can ask any man the more a woman holds out on um giving giving it up the more she's valued and that's fucked up but it's the truth so like think of it in that sense in any way and it's no different for sugar baby world period so that's like my thoughts on that whole topic. And whenever somebody brings this up, I'm going to send you the link to this video so you can hear me say it again. You know, I'm going to have another video coming up that I'm going to redo. It's called Pussy is Power. Um, and I'm going to get really on into some things in that one. But until then, the next question, of course, um, what age do I recommend you start being a sugar baby? Um now i always say 21 um the new sugar baby group is only open to 20 ages 21 and up i made everyone send their birthday prior to being added um without knowing that they needed to be a certain age to be added to the group so i was able to you know vet who was 21 and who was not um yes the sugar baby group is still being added to there will be a link on my website to be added to the sugar baby group to make everything a lot easier because it's harder for me to do it through cash app and everything like that um, but it's a $10 entry, just like usual, one-time fee. Um, but either way, I do not recommend being a sugar baby at 18 because I think you are too young and I think that you should hold on to your innocence for as long as you can. Um, once you become a sugar baby, once you start talking to older guys who could be the age of your dad, you see things differently. Things change. The innocence to a lot of shit is taken away from you. So I want to always be honest and truthful with y'all and say, like, you need to be mentally prepared for that. And I feel like at 21, you're much more mature than you are at 18. At 18, live your life, you know? Um, I don't work with clients under the age of 21 as far as coaching goes unless they have a specific circumstance and I have talked to them and really gotten to know them to the point where I feel like, okay, this girl is mature and, um, you know, she is ready for this world in that sense. And y'all know I do coaching in the realms of confidence, beauty, um, dating, styling, everything, you know, um, business building, everything along those lines. I create custom plans for every single person that I coach. So depending on other things, I'll decide if that client is, you know, able gonna, is going to be able to be coached by me. But a lot of times I don't coach ages under the ages of 21 just because I don't want to play a part in, you know, you losing that innocence because that shit is that shit hit different you know and it's not like it's just a destruction to your world or something like that but it's just different you know i feel like i saw the world as an adult the first time i became a sugar baby and i did become a sugar baby at 18 you know i do think that that is why i'm so mature and have accomplished so much that i have by the age of 25 but the question was what do i recommend and i personally recommend 21 um Another question I always get, why is no one responding to me? Um, okay. I put, I put a lot of different things in quotations. These are the quotations that I get all the time. Why is no one responding to me? Um, I'm not a bad bitch. I'm ugly. I don't look like the girls on the internet. Um, okay. So those two statements 
kind of go hand in hand because the why is no one responding to me you're not putting in enough effort in your photos a lot of y'all think that the photos that you're posting are good in their ass and y'all know that I always will tell you the truth when you DM me the photos and ask me my opinions on the photos. But, like, I mean, literally, like, so many things go into a good photo. Like, I mean, I still have to learn poses and things that are flattering for me. Um, angles, the way the, where, the way the camera is positioned. I now take photos. If y'all go look at my most recent photos, it's a certain amount of space above my head in photos. And it just gives the photo a better aesthetic quality to it, you know? So, y'all need to put more effort in on your photos, and then if not, you need to juice up your bios, because a lot of y'all's bios be dry as hell, boring. I'm uninterested just with you telling me about you, so why would he be interested, you know? Especially when it's um, so many more men on the sites than it is women, you know? So you have to pay attention. You have to be a standout. I hate when people be like, I'm not like the bad bitches on the internet. You got to learn to be your own bad bitch. Ain't no bitch on the internet like me period okay and i stand ten toes in that and i love that about me i am a gym bitch in my own way and you need to feel feel that way Ugh, can't even talk you need to feel that way about yourself too in order to get the success that you want okay the sheep do not win the wolves do okay and we're wolves that's like my quote of 2022 i'm a wolf bitch okay you need to be one too um number three is how do i talk to sugar daddies um why the fuck did i write this okay i think so sometimes when i get the questions i answer them while i'm writing them so for this i wrote how do i talk to sugar daddies and then my question in, in res <laughs> what the fuck sorry my question in response to that question was how do you deal with the men in your life so okay how do you talk to sugar daddies so I personally struggle sometimes answering this question, even though I know how to directly answer it. Because I struggle I struggle answering it because my question is, how do you talk to the other men in your life? Because if you don't know how to talk to the other men in your life, you're going to struggle talking to a sugar daddy. Because with a sugar daddy, you got to have some finesse. You got to have some play. You got to have an end goal with the conversations that you have with these sugar daddies, with these men that you're trying to finesse. You know what I'm saying? Um because if you don't then like you wasting your fucking time and it's never going to get to where you're trying to lead it to you know and then with the other men in your life like every man in your life should have a purpose or should have served a purpose when he was in your life every man should have brought something good to you or something beneficial to you even if it wasn't financial you know was he intellectually there for you was he emotionally there for you like and emotionally i'm not talking about personal personal shit like that i'm talking about still emotional in the sense of making sure you don't have shit to worry about you know like did he look out for you how are the people in your life you know how do you talk to them do you check in with them do you check on their well-being like what do you provide to them you know so when you start to ask yourself those type of questions it'll make it easier for you to have conversations with sugar daddies you know um and then to answer the question blatantly, how do I talk to sugar daddies? I talk to them like they're someone that I want something from, you know what I mean? Like something that, and I, I, that sounds so fucked up to say, but I talk to them in the sense of like someone I want to gain something from, whether it's knowledge or whether it's financial, anything along those lines. Like if it's something knowledge wise, I talk to them in a sense of understanding the things that they understand. And I ask questions about topics that I know that I can gain knowledge from that they are specializing in, you know, like you have to learn how to target each specific person because every specific person is different. How I might talk to Sam might be different how I might talk to John, you know, because Sam and John are two different people. Sam might be a little bit more emotional. John might be very more direct. So with John, I could straight up blatantly ask my question. With uh, Sam, I might have to be like, not beating around the bush, but have an entry question to get to the general topic that I'm trying to get to, you know? So you gotta get to know the person that you're trying to deal with because if you don't really know that person, then you don't really know how to talk to them. So that's why this shit is not an overnight process if you want to be a successful finesse goat with that person. You got to work at every single person, you know? Um, one thing, and I don't know why I just wanted to mention this, because this is not a good thing, I don't think. But I saw it on Catfish the other day. I was watching Catfish, um, and this guy, he was catfishing like over 400 girls. 
And like, he was basically, he was really doing an experiment. He was like a dork who couldn't get attention and he wanted to see how women would respond to an attractive male. And so he stole his photos, but he basically kept, kept things on an Excel spreadsheet. And on each line, it would be like different things about the girl or like how, how close she was to falling for him and certain traits about the girl. And that's how he kept track of like, you know, the type of person he needed to be with each individual girl. Like, this is proven facts, y'all, on how the finesse shit works. Because it even works when males do it to females. So, that's just a good example, I guess. Um, another question is, when do I exclusively talk to a sugar daddy? This is a bomb-ass question. And my only answer for it is when that man is covering 100%. Every fucking expense that you need covered. Okay? Period. And you could be exclusively talking to a sugar daddy, but he doesn't need to know that. And he doesn't need to think he has the power of that. You always need to make it a big deal about you only wanting to have one sugar daddy to give your time and attention to and how important it is for you to build a genuine connection and relationship with that one specific person. And I do believe that you should focus on that one specific person in a sugar baby, sugar daddy relationship once you are getting everything that you, know, you need out of the relationship. But... I never let a man think that it's exclusive until he's doing everything. And that that goes for my boyfriend and man, too. Like, what you think, sweetie? Let the best man win. Fuck, you know? Like, but that's the energy you need to carry. Because a man needs to provide. A man needs to play his part. If he thinks he can, he can claim you full-time, then you need to be giving me life full-time, babe. Period. Okay? Um, and then another one. This is a common question. And I really don't even understand why it's a question. But I kind of do understand why I asked the question. Um, should I put OnlyFans in my bio? No, because I hate to say this, right? Because I support my girls who do OnlyFans, bitch. I think it's raw as fuck to some of y'all that make millions of dollars from literally, you know, a private channel. It's just like Patreon. It's just videos and it's OnlyFans. And OnlyFans was just recognized for sex work. But so many people do so many different things on OnlyFans. But because of the sex work persona that OnlyFans has given to the world, I do not recommend you including your OnlyFans. It looks like you're looking for money. You're money hungry and just OnlyFans gives, puts a bad taste in men's mouth right away who are looking for classier women. So you don't want to close yourself off to that group of men by doing that. So if you, even if you do have an OnlyFans, I would keep that private 100%. Um... And yeah, so those are my five most frequent questions. I wanted to keep this video short, sweet, and to the point. Um, so yeah, I'll do more videos like this because I have way more than five frequent questions. So yeah, but I wanted to get those out the way because those were important to me. And I feel like y'all need to hear those now. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.